Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 36 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the wizard control in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 35 of this video series where we have discussed about the multi-view control. Wizard control enables creation of multi-step user interface. Wizard control provides with built-in previous next functionality. So what we want to do in this demo is that we want to create a wizard control you know, where we want to capture his personal details first. And then when I click the next button, I need to con capture his contact details. And when I click next, show the summary. And then when we click finish, we want to save that to a database and then show a confirmation page. If you remember, in part 35 of this video series, we have achieved this exact same thing using a multi-view control. Now, the difference between a multi-view control and a wizard control is that the multi-view control is a collection of multiple view controls, whereas a wizard control is a collection of multiple wizard steps, as you can see here. And another difference is when we use multi-view control, you know, we have to provide these buttons, you know, that we use to move between multiple views, you know, go to step two, go to step one, or go to step three. We have to provide these buttons. But whereas with wizard control, the wizard control is going to provide those buttons for us. They are inbuilt, you know, within the wizard control. Based on the step type, the wizard control identifies when it has to show next, when it has to show previous, and when it has to show finished patterns. We'll actually look at that in a bit. Okay, so if you haven't watched part 35 of this video series yet, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Because if we understand how to work with a multi-view control, then it's pretty straightforward to work with the wizard control. So in this example, we are going to first capture the personal details and then his employee contact details and then finally show the confirmation and then when we click finish, save the data to a database and show a confirmation page. So a wizard is a collection of wizard steps and the step type property of the wizard determines what buttons uh, you know to show whether it's start button next or previous or finish buttons okay let's flip to visual studio let's drag and drop a wizard control onto the web form so we know that a wizard is a collection of wizard steps okay now if you look at what we want to achieve we want to have three wizard steps personal details and contact details and finally the summary so let's have three wizard steps so let's copy this and paste it here so we have three wizard steps and on the first step I want to capture their personal details okay and in the second step I want to capture their contact details and finally on step three I want to capture the summary I mean we basically want to show the summary to the end user so if we flip to the design mode and we can see that there okay so the steps are done and the first step is basically to capture the personal details now we know that wizard step is going to provide these buttons to navigate between these wizard steps for us so we don't have to write anything for that but to capture you know their first name last name and gender we need these text boxes and these text within a table so we need this HTML for that so I already have that typed here just to save some time in typing so if you look at this I have a very simple HTML table here which has got three rows and then within each TR, I have two TDs. You know, the first TD showing the text, first name, and then a text box to capture that. Similarly, I have text, last name, and a text box to capture last name. And then gender. Gender is a drop down list with two list items, male and female. So let's copy this and paste this in the first step of the wizard control. Okay, so I'm going to paste that there. And then if we flip to the design mode, look at that this is shown you know in the first wizard step and the next wizard step is basically show their contact details and obviously we are going to get these buttons but then we need the HTML to capture the email address and mobile number two text box controls and the text email address and mobile number and these are going to be present inside a table so I have a table with style you know border one pixel solid black and then two TRs with two TDs within the HTR TD email address text and then text box to capture the email address mobile number and a text box to capture the mobile number so copy this and then paste this in the second step of the wizard control so let's flip to Visual Studio so that's the first step of the wizard control 
this is the step two contact detail so let's expand that and paste that here okay so that's step two and finally we want to show the summary again we need the HTML for that you know the label controls and then um, the actual uh, text here first name last name etc and these two headings here personal details and contact details and we have that here the HTML so there is another table let's copy this by the way this all this HTML code will be available on my blog for you to copy and download it okay so let's paste this in the third step of the wizard control so that's it we are done with the steps and the HTML that is required within each step so if we run this now as it stands so it should first show us the wizard step one okay so I enter my first name let's say Mike Hancock and then maybe his gender is male and when I click this next button look at that it will automatically navigate us to the next step if you remember in part 35 of this video series where we have we have discussed about multi view control we have to write the code for that explicitly but wizard control knows what are the steps in that wizard in sequence and then it navigates us to the correct step and now I enter my email address here let's say mike at mike.com and maybe our phone number zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and when I click this next button it will take me to the summary page but then look at this it is not showing or remembering those details so obviously for this we have to write code so when I navigate from step two to step three then I have to pull the details from the controls that I have entered data you know from step one and step two and populate that on this final step in the label controls that we have here okay so let's do that now so let's go to the code behind page and if you remember you know when I actually click the next button that's when I, I have to do that so obviously this wizard control has you know a an event next button click which gets fired whenever you click the next button okay so double click that to generate the event handler and if you remember you know we don't have to do anything on the first step when I move from personal details to contact details we don't really have to do anything but then when I move from contact details to summary that's when we need to capture you know the text that we have entered in these controls and then show them within the label controls here so if you look at the step index you know here the step index is zero because that's again zero index based zero is this step this step is the first step and this is the second step so zero one two so the step index when the step index is two that's when we want to write the code to retrieve data from these text box controls and populate these label controls so let's do that now so if look at this wizard navigation event args so when you are navigating across the wizard you know this object is going to give us the next step index and the current step index so if the next step index that we are going to go is equal to 2 that means we are going to go to the confirmation page then what we want to do we want to populate you know first name label with the text that is present in txt first name text box so txt first name dot text and similarly lbl last name dot text is equal to text from the last name text box and LBL gender dot text the gender is coming from the drop down list so drop down list dot selected value and we want the mobile number dot text is equal to that's coming from txt mobile number dot text and finally LBL what else we have the mobile number and email address so lbl email dot text is equal to txt email dot text that's it okay so now when we run this when we actually get to that uh, step you know it's going to populate those label controls for us so let's fill in the data so first name let's say Mike last name Hancock mail click next 
email address let's say mike at mike.com and his mobile number click next okay so it's filling in all the details for this but a little odd thing is I don't want this uh, you know side uh, this you know side tab to be present here I want the sidebar to be on the top aligned always is there a way to customize that absolutely uh, let's see how to do that I go to the wizard control and this is called the sidebar of the wizard control we'll talk about all those you know how to customize this wizard control in the next session of this video series so go to the properties and then there is a property called style uh, sidebar style where you can actually configure all the properties here so sidebar style here and now all I want to do is the vertical alignment I don't want that to be in the center I want to be it on the top so that it appears there okay and another thing here when I click finish I want to save this data to a database table and go to the confirmation page but now when I click that nothing is happening there basically okay so let's see what to do when I click that finish button again you know there is an event that this wizard control raises you know when you click that finish button and it's called finish button clicked event so finish button click event double click that now we will write the ADO.NET code to save the data to a database table and finally we'll navigate to the confirmation page so first let's have the confirmation page here so to the pro project add a new item web form and let's call this confirmation.aspx click add that should add the confirmation page and then maybe here we'll have a big h1 saying data saved to the database okay so we're not going to actually write the code to save to the database table that's adio.net code and we know how to do that we have discussed about adio.net in adio.net video series if you haven't watched that I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session so response.write we want to navigate to that page confirmation.aspx that's all we are done so now when we run this we'll be you know able to navigate on the finish button we will navigate to confirmation page so first name Mike and cock mail click next enter the email address Mike at Mike dot com enter his phone number click next look at that and when I click finish I go to the okay response dot what did we do there response dot redirect not response dot right so let's redirect the user so obviously when get when we get to the confirmation page we will be redirected okay let's fill in some data there click next email address mobile number and I click next there it shows those details when I click finish data saved to the database we are on the confirmation page and the interesting thing is look at that the browser button the browser is actually remembering the history it's treating all these as different pages but if you notice the URL it's just one web form so it's very similar to how we have worked with multi view control on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day